Psychologists don't believe this. They don't believe that one can live without a dream. I think uh, Freud went to the extent of saying, you can live without sleep but you can't live without a dream. Because these Freuds and Youngs and other people, they never get to study a yogi or a Buddha. They only study sick people. Uh, why do dreams occur and is dreams related to karma and is there a way I can avoid it? <laughs> well, you're not having good ones <laughs> So we are talking about nightmares, not dreams <laughs> One can have four different types of dreams. Ninety percent of the dreams that people have are simply unfulfilled desires. Just unfulfilled desires trying to find expression when you are in sleep. If people don't dream, lot of them would be much more frustrated than they are right now because dreams sort of satisfy their desiring process. Many things that they cannot do in their life, they will do in their dreams, yes. So that's why the dream… you know, the dream makers, the dream machines have become so popular, the cinema and television has become so popular. Without doing anything, you can fall in love with somebody, you can fight, you can bash the whole Martians who come from somewhere, <laughs> you know. You can do everything, still popping the corn. It gives you… you don't have to do anything with your life. So the dream machines are so popular because dream satisfies. Without living, you can live. That's the significance of dream. Without any risk you can fall in love, without any risk you can fall out. If you do it in your life, all these things will cost. It'll cost life, you know. But in the cinema, three hours you can fall in love and fall out. You can fight, have battles and works and come out without a scratch on your body. It's, you know, it gives you a free experience of life, but it's not life very big difference. So dreams are also just like that. Projection is just happening in your own mind but it is the same thing. Ninety percent of the dreams belong to this. But there are other kinds of dreams which could be giving you access to other aspects of life, which are rare if I talk about it, you may start imagining everything about every little dream that you have which is dangerous. So I would generally say, discount the dreams has just empty nonsense that's happening. If some dream is of a certain significance, anyway it'll manifest in a much more powerful way than just being a dream that you saw and you forgot. It'll anyway find much bigger manifestation instead of trying to read meanings into dreams because once you enter that space, your imagination you can't control, it'll just fly off. Everything, every corner you will start seeing spirits and this and that and works, you know, anybody you see and you little attracted, you think, oh, I know them from their past life and you know, this is happening to all the new age people. <laughs> Every day on the street they are meeting their past life connections and all this because you have no breaks on your imagination. Once you set it forth, it will just run, it will simply run. So, it's best to be skeptical and say, all this is just nonsense. If something is beyond the nonsense, it will anyway pursue you, it won't leave you. So, how to stop them? Why make them nice? Can't you produce good movies? <laughs> Free cinema, why don't you enjoy it? <laughs> but if you want to stop it, don't try to stop it. If you become meditative, dreams will disappear. If you bring a certain level of awareness into your life, dream will completely disappear. Psychologists don't believe this. They don't believe that one can live without a dream. I think uh, Freud went to the extent of saying, you can live without sleep but you can't live without a dream. Dream is so important, all the time it's on, you know, REM, you know what's REM? Yeah. So, in sleep, 
this is all the time going on. Because these Freuds and Youngs and other people, they never get to study a yogi or a Buddha. They only study sick people, yes? <laughs> they study sick people and make conclusions about the whole humanity. And these conclusions are, you know, there is a certain usefulness to it. At the same time, they are phenomenally wrong. They are phenomenally wrong. They are just taking away the other possibility of what a human being can be, saying that this is what a human being can be, nothing more, nothing less. This happened to Freud. One man came and uh, his problem is he believes that he's dead. So, Freud being a father of psychoanalysis, he set up a treatment for him. Every day, he will stand in front of the mirror and go on saying, dead men don't bleed, dead men don't bleed, dead men don't bleed, dead men don't bleed. This is the mantra, every day minimum three hours, stand in front of the mirror and go on telling yourself, dead men do not bleed. So he did this for a few months and when Freud felt the situation was right, he took a pin and pricked that man's finger. Blood came. What does it say now? He looked at it with joy and said, dead men do bleed. And uh, Freud himself was so terrified of death. Do you know this? He was so terrified of death. It was his dream to see the Egyptian pyramids. Freud desperately wanted to see Egyptian pyramids. But he was so terrified of death, all his life he could never muster enough courage to go there. And this man makes the ultimate statement about humanity. There is value to his study, I'm not trying to dismiss everything, but they should not make ultimate statements about humanity, that's only one phase of humanity. Insanity is just one phase of humanity, compulsiveness is just one phase of humanity, that's not everything. There is a way of raising beyond all those things. If only Freud has a subject who could, uh, you know, suppose he found a yogi and studied him, then all his conclusions would have been very, very different. You know, all, today also these things are going, I never… we never usually subject ourselves to these things, but this happened a few years ago. Out of some obligation, I said, okay, they wanted to wire me and study what's happening with me. Huh? Is it? Do you do that? So they wanted to study my gamma whatever, what is it? Gamma waves or rays, what is it? Waves. So they put up, I don't know, a dozen electrical connections and they said, you meditate, it's okay. Then they shook me like this and I said, okay, what does your machine say? They said, by all parameters you're dead. So I have been diagnosed dead by the doctors, <laughs> you better watch out. <laughs> Either dead or brain dead, whichever way. <laughs> so if you can be like this, you are fully alive, but you're dead. You're wide awake, but you're fast asleep. If you can be like this, then all this nonsense that they're talking is not relevant to you. And every human being can be like this. It is not far away. It's not happened because people have not looked in that direction at all, that's all. It is not difficult, it's not far away, it need not take a lifetime. It is just that people have never looked in the direction, they're all looking in a different direction. That's the only problem. <laughs>